In this video, I will present the paper, Deep SDF, Learning Continuous Sign Distance Function for Shape Representation. 3D reconstruction, also commonly addressed as the inverse graphic problem, is about recovery of 3D object from 2D or partial 3D observations. The research interest in this field has been rising rapidly due to its wide application in robotics, simulation, and content creation. In contrast to the learning in 2D domain, there is an ongoing dispute on which 3D representation is the best for learning. The desired representation should be compact, expressive, and efficient. Before the deep SDF and other implicit representations came out, the dominant representations could be categorized into three categories. There are voxels, point cloud, and mesh representations. Voxel can represent arbitrary topology, but it has a cubically growing compute and memory requirements. More compact representation, point cloud, do not describe surface. Methods that produce triangular mesh directly at that time are limited to the topology of the template that they are using. Also, they often exhibit artifacts from inaccurate deformation, as shown in the example. I just want to mention that recently there are a number of work proposed to overcome the issue of fixed template. These methods can output mesh with arbitrary topology, such as in MeshRCNN and DevTet. Prior work on 3D representation lacks the ability of representing fine surface details. The key insight of this work is to directly regress the continuous sign distance field using a neural network. A sign distance function is a continuous function that, for a given point in 3D space, it outputs the point's distance to the closest surface, with the sign encodes whether the point is inside or outside the watertight mesh. The underlying surface boundary is implicitly represented by the ISO surface, in which case SDF value equals to zero. This is more informative than just having occupancy value, and conceptually, the surface can be extracted with less curing points than the concurrent work occupancy network. To compare occupancy function with sign distance function, let's look at a quick example. Here we are running marching tetrahedron with a grid size of 100. If we only have occupancy value, which is the sign at each grid position, we have to place the surface at the center of each edge and the resulting shape is very wavy. However, if we have the ground truth sign distance value, we can place faces by interpolating the distance and the result is much closer to the ground truth while we query the same number of points. With that being said, the sign distance function is a very expressive 3D representation. In this paper, the authors proposed a formulation of generative shape modeling with SDF in continuous domain. Notice that they are not the first one who use SDF in the learning setup. A previous work from Geiger's group proposed a model that predicts SDF at discrete locations. It is similar to the last example I showed you. However, DeepSDF is the first work that's, that used neural network to approximate SDF in continuous domain. Moreover, they proposed a novel learning method based on a probabilistic auto decoder. Further, they demonstrate the application of their formulation by obtaining state-of-the-art results on shape reconstruction and completion. Next, I will dive into the method details. Deep SDF regress the sign distance function using a fully connected neural network, and this function takes input as XYZ coordinate, a shape called Z, and outputs the predicted SDF of that particular position conditioned on the shape code. In addition, for shape reconstruction, we only care about the surface boundary, so we want the network to focus its prediction near the zero level set. Therefore, they further clip the SDF value with a small threshold. The author empirically showed that, with a smaller truncation dis distance, they achieve better reconstruction quality. Next, let's look at how to obtain meaningful codes for a batch of shapes. We want the shape code Z to encode the information of a single shape that can be interpreted by the decoder. One approach is to train an autoencoder such that the latent space of the bottleneck layer will automatically be the shape code. However, the authors claim that it is not straightforward to design an encoder on SDF. Also, 
Since only decoder is retained for inference, it is unclear whether using an encoder is the most effective use of computation resource during training. This drives them to use a framework, as they called autodecoder, for learning a shape embedding without the encoder. They first randomly initialize the code for each training shape. Then the code is attached to an XYZ coordinate. And with the ground truth SDF, they can jointly optimize the shape code as well as the decoder weights to minimize the prediction error with simple back propagation. At inference time, the optimal code that best explains the input shape can be obtained using gradient descent minimizing the same objective function. Notice that during optimization, the trained decoder weights are kept frozen and only the code is optimized. The full reconstruction can be achieved by running inference with the optimized latent code in full 3D space. In this example, I'm showing shape completion from a single depth map. There are two ways to use deep SDF representation in real applications. The deep SDF can be used in rendering process with recasting, where the user should race from each pixel until it meets a zero crossing to obtain the depth map. The surface normal can be calculated by taking gradients through back propagation. Furthermore, a marching cube algorithm can be applied to extract the mesh. While both methods can be used for ISO surface extraction, in practice, marching cubes runs faster, but it also imposes quantization error due to fixed grid size. Now let's look at some results. Although deep SDF extract the shape code by optimization at inference time, it can effectively generalize to unseen shapes. The authors show that their method significantly outperforms Atlas Net on a wide variety of shape classes and metrics as shown in the table below, which agrees with our observation here. Next, the authors demonstrate their method on the shape completion task from partial scans, basically a single depth map. Deep SDF produces more visually pleasing and accurate shape reconstruction than the state-of-the-art approach at that time. Notice that one key advantage of Deep SDF pipeline is that the inference can be performed from an arbitrary number of SDF samples with the same trained model. For other models like occupancy network, typically it needs separate trained model to reconstruct shape from complete point cloud and partial point cloud. In addition, they test the robustness of their shape completion method by using the noisy depth map as input. As shown in the figure, as the noise level increases, the reconstruction error increases much slower, implying that the shape prior encoded in the network play an important role regularizing the shape reconstruction. This table is showing that DeepSDF has a much smaller network size compared to all other methods using different representations. However, the inference time is also much higher than other methods because of the iterative optimization at inference time. The author have an interesting demo video of feature space interpolation. As you can see, the transition between shapes is smooth as the parts emerging and changing size. This demonstrates that the learned feature embedding space is complete and continuous. This explains the capability of reconstructing novel shapes, which could be seen as the interpolation of two seen shapes. One limitation of this work is that inference needs optimizing latent code with SDF. This does, is not applicable to 2D observations. A later work called Disney addressed this problem with a novel image encoder. Another limitation is that decoding with MLP taking a global vector as input leads to over smooth results. One approach to this problem is to use a 3D feature volume along with 2D feature map in orthogonal views. This one is proposed in the paper called Convolutional Occupancy Network. This work is capable of representing scene level details. In conclusion, in the deep SDF paper, the authors proposed the formulation of generative shape modeling with sine distance function in continuous space that is efficient, expressive, and continuous. Also, they proposed a learning method for 3D shape based on a probabilistic autodecoder. 
Further, they demonstrate the application of their formulation by obtaining state-of-the-art results on shape reconstruction and completion.